to be here. So, my name is Ray Bojenheimer, and I'm here today to talk about what can mycology for for VR and vice versa. Next slide. A little bit uh, about myself. I have a background in uh, psychology, so I did uh, did my master's at Lund University in um, research psychology. Then later on, um, did another double master in interaction technology and human computer interaction at the University of Twente in the Netherlands and uh, Université Paris Saint Clair in uh, France, respectively. And uh, combining these uh, led me to uh, co-found company Ameliates, where we build psychological applications for VR. Next slide. So when I started approaching this issue, what, what's the interaction with the psychology and uh, VR, I narrowed it down, down to uh, what psychological science specifically can offer for VR and uh, how VR as a method, uh, what it can offer for psychological interventions. Next slide. Let's start with uh, psychology for VR. Next slide. Uh, what I think is uh, quite, quite important, what psychology can offer, is the psychological methods, uh, starting with human, human factors, of course. Since uh, we're designing applications that are not just uh, 2D screens, we, we have to think about ergonomics as well. I think uh, this field uh, is, is very valuable uh, when, you're, when you're trying to design applications that, well, first of all, don't make uh, people too nauseous, but also make the experiences enjoyable. And then we have research uh, methods, so just the... Uh, it's the uh, tradition of using uh, within subjects or between subjects, pre-test, post-test, to make sure that uh, you are doing what you, what you want to achieve with those applications. Then you, of course, have uh, measurement tools. So if you're developing psychological applications, for example, you should have uh, a depression inventory if, if that's your, your target. And last but not least, there's uh, validation, which kind of uh, combines all of the uh, previous ones. What inferences can you draw from the uh, psychological data you're getting? Next slide. Um, another thing that psychology can contribute to VR, and I think this is uh, perhaps more exciting for, for everyone, is the, uh, is the new product and service innovations. I, I narrowed down it to three, although the possibilities are endless in my opinion. Uh, well, first of all, there's clinical psychology. So what kind of uh, ideas you can draw from that for mental health treatments or diagnosis or, or monitoring how you can use VR for that. There's organizational psychology. So for example, productivity and HR tools. I've seen already on uh, the Oculus Store, you have quite a few productivity applications out there which uh, seek to empower people in their uh, productivity. Um, lastly, there's applied psychology, so general behavior change, uh, for example, getting uh, over addiction or, or developing new good habits and general wellness. Next slide. Yes, then let's move on to VR for psychology. Next slide. So what VR can offer for psychology is, uh, well, first of all, the psychological impact. It's what, uh, what these uh, different studies have discovered is that there's certain mood and activation effects when you put on these uh, VR goggles. It uh, affects you uh, differently in a psychological uh, way of speaking. Also, there's the impact of bodily movements uh, because your body is an essential tool when you're using the arm. And uh, lastly, there's the cognition of abstract concepts in immersive worlds. If you can do sort of impossible things in, in, in immersive worlds, uh, it can affect how you think about those things. Next slide. 
Another one is uh, new forms of intervention. And this kind of bridges uh, to the uh, new product innovation that VR can offer for psychology. So of course, uh, when you have this new medium, you can think about new forms of uh, traditional therapy that take place VR instead. Uh, you can have new approaches to self-reflection and uh, new appro approaches to therapist-client interactions as well. Next slide. VR, indeed, as a digital therapeutic, has been effectively uh, used to treat anxiety and depression, phobias, autism, and others. Uh, and following this will be a couple of examples, so I'm not only talking about abstract concepts. Next slide. So one of these examples was to treat anxiety. What researchers did was they combined an exercise by VR set. Um, <clears throat> and then they combined the control group to the group with the VR environment and the exercise bike. What they discovered was a greater reduction in tension if you had the virtual environment to support you. Next slide. Then for the uh, treatment of uh, autism, uh, researchers built a VR social cognition training application. Uh, which was aimed to enhance the social skills, uh, cognition, and functioning of uh, people with autism over five weeks. And as a result, they showed an increase in emotion recognition, real-life social functioning as, as well, showing some uh, really promising results in this regard. Next slide. And there was a study on uh, PTSD. This is actually a, a, a classic already 20 years ago. Um, they created a uh, VR environment simulating Vietnam War conditions, so not exactly a war zone, but the user would uh, fly in a helicopter over a jungle. And uh, as a result, the participant showed a increase in both condition rated and self rated PTSD. So both the uh, Cognition and the person themselves felt like uh, they felt a little a uh, little better about their uh, condition. At that next slide. Um, next, I'm going to talk about what I've uh, personally worked on. Uh, next slide. Let's start with EMDR VR. Uh, this is something I worked on uh, last year. And uh, well, EMDR in, in a nutshell is a technique where the treated people uh, move their eyes back and forth. This is used with treating uh, traumatic memories. Next slide. What I specifically did was uh, create a new design of this version. Uh, I wanted to incorporate uh, locomotion, uh, more diverse mini games, and a uh, green natural environment for a more immersive experience. So while the EMDR works with uh, a movement, uh, I also read some studies that it might just be the fact that you have something to do while you're thinking about traumatic memories. And that's that's why I, I tried the same uh, same thing with uh, these small mini games. Next slide. And what I discovered was that uh, there was a greater reduction in unpleasant moods uh, in the immersive uh, version I, I developed compared to the. Uh, standard version and well of course uh, it has limitations but uh, but i was uh, quite surprised and uh, well happily surprised that uh, seem to be this kind of uh, effects next slide let's move on to cbt vr this is of course more of a team effort what we're doing in the in the company uh, what we're doing is a uh, cognitive behavioral therapy application for treatment of uh, anxiety and depression symptoms. Next slide. Uh, CBT, or cognitive behavioral therapy, in a nutshell, is an active form of therapy where the uh, person is uh, challenged to, uh, 
to think about their cognitive biases in a new way, therefore uh, change their negative thinking patterns, effect against uh, anxiety and depression, among uh, many others. Next slide. What we designed was this uh, CBTVR light, which is specifically designed for people with little or no experience in, in VR. It, it is still it's a new thing, and a lot of our test users were using VR for the first time. Uh, so we, uh, we wanted to make it simple, easy to approach. Um, it focuses on identifying cognitive biases, and then it includes a distress assessment. Next slide. Here you see a short video demo. Next slide. So that uh, shortly recap what we've been uh, been working on, and uh, the use cases for this uh, are self help uh, therapy enhancement, and then analytics for the individual themselves as well as their uh, therapist. Next slide. Um, and what we've discovered in our user tests so far is uh, kind of a uh, similar. Similar effects as in the EMDR VR research, as well as uh, research what we've been doing on our uh, web application Reflect CBT, so that uh, users uh, show a decrease in unpleasant moods after using the application. Next slide. Uh, as I already mentioned, this is of course. Uh, team efforts and I wanted to uh, introduce our team shortly at this point. So we're uh, all colleagues from the uh, Human Computer Interaction Sign Program. Uh, myself, I am from Finland. Uh, then we have Zach Wilson from the United States with a background in uh, computer science and visual arts. We have uh, Michele Romani from uh, Italy with a background in cybersecurity and he's uh, so kind of our new technology uh, discoverer in the company. Next slide. And we've uh, recently added uh, some more people into our team. So we have uh, Bianca Trinidad from the United States, uh, specialty in uh, psychology, and uh, Daniela Fajardo Garnica from uh, Mexico with a background in uh, visual arts and uh, product design. Excellent. These are our uh, current partners, and uh, of course, uh, we're interested in uh, growing our, our partner roster. So let's uh, get in touch if uh, that's what you're interested in. Excellent. And what, uh, what our team really excels at is uh, combining uh, psychology with uh, good design and with extended realities. Next slide. Afterwards, if you feel like contacting us, uh, for example, for psychological validation or consulting uh, advice for applications, uh, application design, or if you're interested in designing a psychological VR app, we uh, also like to work with the companies. If you want a demo, or if you have something something else in mind, you can uh, send an email to our hello at mine.com or con connect with us on uh, LinkedIn, whichever is your preferred medium.